Hi, thanks for watching this video. In 15 minutes, I'm gonna try to explain what is OAuth V2 and OpenID Connect, what the link between both, and just the minimum to know to start using OAuth V2 and OpenID Connect with a 5 solution. The goal of the video is not to demonstrate how to implement OAuth and OpenID Connect with APM, but to know the basics on how to use it. So first of all, have a look on what is OAuth, what is OpenID Connect, and the link between both. So as you can see, it's pretty simple. The OAuth V2 is used for authorization. And on top of OAuth V2, we added OpenID Connect for authentication or identification. So the OpenID Connect is just there to know who you are. So when you connect to, uh, to an application, a mobile application or a web application, when you see on the top right, top right corner, welcome Matthew, this is OpenID Connect, okay? So the authorization server, I'm going to show you what it is, but an authorization server, someone who know you, provided to the mobile application, your first name, your last name, your profile, and sometime, if you connect with Facebook or Google, you can see your profile picture or avatar. This is OpenID Connect, okay? So the OpenID Connect is just there to get information regarding your ID, identification. For the rest, for the access, to grant an access, OAuth V2 for authorization. So, OpenID Connect is on top of OAuth, it's a token, the name of the token is ID token, I'm going to show you, okay, ID underscore token, and it just provides information regarding yourself, and that's it. So, let's take, a, let's take an example. We have Batman. Batman is known as resource owner. Batman owns something, for instance, mailbox, contacts. There is a client. The client in the example would be a browser connecting to Evernote. And on Evernote, there is a, an icon, please connect with Google or please connect with Facebook. This is odd, okay? So Batman wants to connect with his Google account so that Evernote can retrieve and grant access from Google and get information like profile, picture profile, and contacts, because he wants to share Evernote notes and notebooks with his contact, okay? So when Batman clicks on connect with Google, Evernote redirects Batman to Google authorization server, OAuth authorization server, accounts.google.com. You can try. So, Batman arrive on the Google authorization server and Batman authenticates. As you can see in the request, and I will show you later on, there are some information regarding the way to connect and the way to come back to Evernote, okay? So you can see the response type is code. It's very important. So with authorization code flow, uh, we exchange a code to, an, to a token, but let's have a look. So Batman authenticate, username, password, MFA, we don't care. And then Batman has to consent. Okay, so Batman consent to, to accept Evernote to get information from his email address, his basic profile information, and to manage the contacts. Okay, manage means download, delete, we don't know, okay, but it's manage the contacts. When Batman approved, okay, it's allow, there is a, a redirect URI, so ba the Batman is redirected to Evernote with an authorization card. It's not a token, it's just an authorization card that backend application, okay, so this code can be seen by the brother, but Evernote will use this 
authorization code to request an access token and an ID token. Okay, so the ID token is just a way to see Batman in the welcome page. Okay, so hello Batman in Everland. The access token is the authorization token, is the hold token. So this one will be used to request information, for instance, for the contact. Okay, so Evernote, the backend application, so that's why it's dotted line, as we can see. Some lines are, some arrows are full, some are dotted line. The full are the front end and can be catched by the brother. The dotted line are the back end. Okay, so it's only between a back end application and a uh, an authorization server or something else. Okay, so as you can see here, the backend Evernote application is exchanging or requesting access to contact.google.com uh, with the access token. Okay, so very it's pretty simple to understand. So now let's continue. Let's have a look uh, on how it works exactly. So the use case is pretty simple. We don't talk about F5 right now, okay? It's uh, I want to understand the workflow, exactly how it works. So on the right, I have two authorization servers. I will start with one, Google, and I'm going to show you a second one, Microsoft Azure AD. The first one for Google is pretty simple. So on the right, I have a, a client, okay? So the idea is to simulate an open ID and OAuth v2 and open ID connect con workflow. So open ID connect debugger is very useful for that. So first of all on Google APIs, I create a new client. So I created it, it's taste OIDC Postman. Why? Because we are going to use Postman as well. I don't have to do it, a lot of things. Just create a new application. This is a name, okay, or a new credential in Google. And I got a client ID, a client secret, never share this client secret, okay? And I have to specify redirect URI, okay? So it's just a way to identify the application requesting an authorization code. So here it would be OIDC debugger, my website, or Postman, okay, I have a Postman here that we're gonna use just after. So, now, on OpenID Connect Debugger, let's try to simulate the client. The client requests the tokens, the resource server validates the tokens, okay? Makes sense? If I come back to my slide, it's important to understand this one the client request tokens authorization card then the resource server here validates the tokens okay so so far we are here we simulate a website that needs tokens to communicate with contact.google.com for instance so authorize your right in in Azure ID, it's very easy to find this information. In Google, it's more difficult. You have to read the doc, <laughs> read the manual. So if you go to the to the Google Identity Platform, uh, you find the old protocol, and inside documentation, you will find the authorized URI. The authorized URI is a URI used to request a token. My my ground flow is is a uh, authorization code, sorry. So I'm requesting a code. So this is the URI. Most of the time, the URI finished by auth or authorized, so you, you can search in the page, okay? So I want OpenID Connect Debugger to make a call to accountsgoogle.com slash blah, 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 slash auth to request an, a code, okay? So I need a client ID. My client ID is here, copy. And then there is a concept of a scope. 
for the redirect rewrite sorry as you can see it match if i make a mistake my request will be denied okay the scope is the way to retrieve information from google the authorization the the access token doesn't have any information regarding myself okay so i need to make and we'll show you i'll make a call to google afterward please tell me who he is okay and the scope is profile so in in google documentation you can go to api scope and you can see all the scopes profile email surname and so on okay so now i think i'm good and i need, I need to select my my grant flow i told you the most the first one is authorization code flow this is the more secure the most secure uh, ground flow because the client never see the access token it just sees a notation code it's totally useless so if i request a token this is the implicit the second one so let's do let's go with the code so i call this uri i i just provide my client id I, po I provide a scope and I send a request. I select my account. So this is my login and consent. I log in and I consent, but I don't put any consent here. Uh, and I got an authorization code. Okay. If you remember my my slide, now I have a code here, okay, in the client side, and I need to exchange this code for an access token an id token so this has to be done by the backend side okay so to simulate this backend we're gonna use postman okay because there is no with open id connect debugger there is no backend simulation so now i'm here and what i need to do first is to find the uri from google to request this token so most of the time is a slash token okay so you can read the documentation it's pretty simple and at a, at a time we're gonna see the token this one okay exchange authorization code for a refresh and access token perfect it's what i need okay so i take this one and as you can see here i need to provide my client secret okay you saw it previously so here we are, this is the URI. I need to provide a parameter with the redirect URI, mandatory, and then the body itself. So, the code. Okay, so let's pass the code we just get, not this one, we just get from OpenID Connect Debugger. Okay, the client, good. Session state, session state, you can see is the depending some authorization server we need or not in here as you can see there is no session state so i don't care it's for as ready ground type authorization code yes i present to you a code please response with an access token the client id uh, is still there my secret key okay it's put in variables but it's the, key, the secret key you saw in a in the google console and now I can send my request, okay? So, now, as a backend application, I reserve an access token here, the one that I need to use, and an ID token, okay? So, this one is a no pack token. It means we can't read it okay if i copy it if i try to decode by 64 don't expect to decode it is useless okay so if i go to joy.io it's a way to check if my if my token is opaque or joint there are two kind of tokens okay google provide with opaque azure provide with joint so the joint can be decoded, the pack can't be decoded. So in the next video, I will explain 
how to use, how to validate an OPAC, and how to validate a joint with APM. But today, what is important is now I have an access token, so I can request Google API from now with the access token. I can retrieve my contact. I can retrieve my information. And here, as you can see, I have an ID underscore token. So ID token is uh, the open ID token. And this one, this one is a joint token. Open ID token, open ID connect token is joint always. So if I pass it, as you can see, there are three parts, headers in, in red, the payload in purple, and the signatures in blue. This token is auto-signed. So very useful uh, for APM because we, we can validate the token with the signature. So here, as you can see, I got some information regarding my account in uh, in Google, okay? So I told you ID token is just a way to see your name in the client, for instance, or see your picture in the client. So here you can see my name is Matthew D. This is what I set in my Google profile. So this is how it works, okay? It's not so complicated. Uh, every uh, authorization server, Google has already another one, is different. So it's important to, to have a look in the documentation for everyone. In Azure AD, as you can see, these are the endpoints, okay? So there are V1 and V2, uh, and it's slash authorized for, uh, for, for Microsoft. But it's, it's a personal URL pair tenant, okay? So this is my tenant, and you can see my authorized and my token. So if I do the same with OpenID Debugger and Postman, I'm gonna use these two URI. This is the way it works, okay? See you in the next video, and I will explain how to use now this access token to access a backend application protected by APM.